Hey guys, it's Josh from Melbourne Tuning here. Today we've got Mark's i30N. Uh, Mark's i30N has got a four inch downpipe. He's got an uh, intake there, and he's also got a blow off valve installed. Now, we found some limitations today while tuning the car. So the first one is that we get excessively high intake temperatures um, after a few runs of the dyno. We're getting around you know, 50 to, to 69 degrees intake temperatures in the car while tuning on the dyno. So that was one of the main limitations that we found today. Um, but the best thing is, is we've come in here today and we've developed a safe, reliable tune that's going to be an absolute monster on the street. So funnily enough, we've developed this tune for the last six months um, with about three or four i30Ns in Australia and even over in Germany. And um, basically we've come to the, the part now where we've brought it on the dyno. Mark's got some time, I've got some time and we've, uh, we're using Race Talk Engineering's dyno in uh, Western Australia. the boost team into the uh, boost, pressure boost pressure reference on the engine. We've got ourselves uh, an OBD Autel scan tool and with that Autel we've been logging intake temperatures, ignition timing, boost pressures, exhaust gas temperatures um, and a few other things that are important during the tuning process uh, that, that is important to log to make sure that we're doing the right thing for the car. Um, now what we found is that um, over the last six months you know, we've done as much as we can road tuning you know, here as well as in, um, in Germany. I've got a, a client over there who we've been doing remotely. Um, today we've got marks on the dyno, like I was saying, and uh, we've got it here now. And um, what we've managed to do, we've managed to get a really, really nice torque figure, a really nice power figure. Um, it's not what we would have expected, but the reason for that is because of the variation in dynos and also because of the intake temperatures hitting around 69 degrees Celsius, which is pretty high. So we're looking at upgrading that to a uh, to an upgraded intercooler. We hope that that's going to really help us out. So we're sitting around 195 wheel kilowatts, I believe. And um, what was the torque value? Uh, 420. 420. That's 90 meters of the wheels as well. So that's where we're sitting now. Um, and we started off with about what 20 or 30 kilowatts less than that. And um, the torque was about 100 to 120 meters less than that as well. We'll post that all online as well with the data dyno sheet. Not. So um, I'd like to just come and show you basically the, the software what we've been working on. So we're, we did um, about six revisions on the dyno. Uh, we're up to revision six as you can see up there. Uh, man, we've tuned 134 different maps on this ECU. So many different things. Um, and basically we've, uh, we've found some limitations which just have surprised me. So the first thing that I, that I realized with this engine is that uh, putting boost into it is just, it's just not good for it. So what I mean by that is pumping it full of boost, trying to get it to 25 psi, whatever you want to do, not cool. It's not the way this engine likes to be tuned, as we found. So we've, we've got around 19 to 16 psi, um, in with the four inch dump pipe, um, and uh, basically we found we're making more power than around 20 psi to 22 psi. So all that boost pressure doesn't do anything. Um, what we've done is obviously we've um, also played around the ignition timing. We've got a lot of torque mid-range, like I was saying before, but that has been a great, fun, great experience. Um, it's, it's probably, to be honest, it's, it's a, probably a more fun car to drive than my A45. So, you know, um, I'm just excited to see where Mark takes it, and I hope we get that in full upgrade, and we'll keep you posted. Thanks. Cool.